Good morning. We're going to be looking at the cosine law today. We've already looked at the sine law, where the sine law is sine of an angle over the side of the angle is equal to the sine of the, uh, of the second angle over the side of the second angle, etc. Um, even on this set of notes, you could write it the opposite way as well. So just be aware of that, that you could have side over sine A is equal to side over sine B is equal to side over sine C. Uh, and then you could solve that way too, which, uh, which appears right over here actually. And so there are particular cases in which we can no longer use the sine law. So if we actually were to look at this and say that the sine of angle A opposite that is 17. So here's one pairing. Sine of B is opposite to 32. Here's another pairing. And sine of 105 is opposite to side C. The problem with each one of these is that if we look over here, there is not a pair, not an angle side pair, no angle side pair, and no angle side pair. There's always going to be one unknown, at least in this particular question. And so up until this point, we've examined right angle triangle ratios to help us solve problems involving right angle triangles. We've also looked at the sine law to help us solve certain non-right triangle problems. What happens in a non-right angle triangle that can't be solved using the sine law? So here's one perfect example where there's absolutely no pairings at all, where it goes side, angle, side, and there's no pairings. There's no side uh, angle pairing. So in this particular case, what we're going to have to do is look to the cosine law. Notice that we're not given a complete ratio. None of the fractions have a value in with uh, this, the numerator and denominator given. These, there's one missing, there's one missing here, and there's one missing for C. Therefore, we can't use the sine law, and we gotta use a new tool called the cosine law. So if we were to take a look at an example, for the triangle above, notice that we we're given two sides and the size of the angle formed by these two sides. This angle is known as the uh, we're not gonna, known as the what, like, I don't know. We could call this the side angle side uh, be, because it's found between the two given sides. Side angle side. The reality is, it, is this, is that if you're not finding a particular pairing and you're given three pieces of information, you will be able to solve it using the cosine law, not the sine law. So that's the way that I've been trying to teach this uh, more recently, is that find a pair. If you can't find a pair, you're not going to be able to use the sine law. Uh, as long as you have three pieces of information, otherwise you should still be able to solve it using the coast law. We can use the coast law to solve it. Here is the formula. It's broken, uh, broken up. Um, these are actually all the same. So you can just really switch up these letters. Um, and as long as you're doing it in the proper order here. So if you have side B and C, there's side B and C over here. Um, side A is what it looks like you're trying to solve and then there is angle A on the far side right over there. So these are all the formulas for when solving for um, an unknown side. And in this particular case, we could be trying to solve for C up above. We don't know what si side C is, so we could use one of those formulas below. And why not be consistent? Use this third one right over here where we're trying to solve for C. So we might as well go and say C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. And that's going to be what will help us to solve for uh, the unknown side here. So I believe it's written exactly the same. So yes, it's the same exact triangle as on the other side. So if we flip to this side right over here, what you'll see is the same triangle. All, all the pairings where one of them is not known. So we're going to be writing that formula out again. C squared is equal to, and it's been a while so I haven't memorized it. So we'll just take a look. A squared plus B squared. Look at that actually, just for a moment. If we take a look at C squared plus uh, is equal to A squared plus B squared, this is the same formula that you see when you're using Pythagorean's relationship. Very interesting that it starts off the exact same way. So just be aware of that. It has the same beginning here. And then I believe it's minus 2AB cos C. And yes, correct, minus 2AB cos C. And all of these things are multiplying, so it's gonna be two times A times B times cos C. There's a minus sign in, in between here, we're adding those two up. And remember, this is C squared. So if you wanted to like rewrite this formula with solving for just C, it's gonna be C is equal to this exact same thing and then just take the square root of everything. 
So we can begin plugging in our values. It really doesn't matter what, what, which one you choose A and B to be here because we already have particular values for A and B. Let's be very particular. So A, angle A is here. This is going to be side A. And then that means that this is going to be side B. So we're going to start off with 17 squared plus 32 squared minus 2 times 17 times 32 times cos 105. And that's all going to be square rooted. I'm going to solve for everything in, in there right now. And we'll do that by just moving this off to the side here and we can begin plugging it in. So you should make sure to look to see what I'm actually doing here, solving inside. So it's 17 squared plus 32 squared minus two times 17 times 32 multiplied by cos 105. I'm on degrees. This is what I'm gonna have. And remember, I haven't square rooted this yet. So this is 1594.6. Take the square root of that. What I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna go square root button and second function answer. And I'm going to get a value of, that's interesting. It's hard to see there, but it's 39.9 there. 39.9 centimeters. So if we went or wanted to round to just uh, the nearest whole number, we're going to get 40 centimeters. And that would be how you would solve for side C. Using this formula, plugging in the values that you know, and we know everything on this side. We don't even have to change the way that the formula looks, which is kind of nice. Don't forget the square roots. Um, you can do it at the beginning here, or you could always do it after you've solved this 1594.6 and then square root both sides. That really doesn't matter uh, to me that much, whether you do it at the beginning or a little bit later on, but just don't forget to do it. So this would be how to solve for an unknown side using the Coase law. And I believe that what we're gonna try to do next is solve for an unknown angle. And here we're gonna be given three lengths. Again, we have three known values this time it's all the sides. And what I said before too, is we don't have a single pair, which again, this is gonna be side B over here. This is side A right over here. And side C is formed through this angle. We don't know any of the angles, but we do know three pieces of information. So we will be able to use the Coase law. Now it says, uh, given the three sides, solving for an angle. Solve all the missing angles. We're, we're gonna have to solve for every single one of these angles here. So let us go ahead and try to do that. We're gonna start with this exact same formula. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus two AB cos C. Um, but we need to isolate this variable right over here. So I'm gonna start by bringing these two variables over to the other side. C squared minus A squared minus B squared is equal to negative 2ab cos c. Now I'm going to divide everything by negative 2ab. And we're going to get c squared minus a squared minus b squared all divided by negative 2ab equals cos c. And then if you remember, the way to isolate your angle, which is the unknown value here, this is the angle, we have to take the inverse of cos. So we're gonna take the inverse of cos. And we're just gonna swap these uh, the sides as well. Oh, sorry, I keep uh, not being able to show what's going on here. So I brought a squared and b squared over to the other side over here. Um, so I subtracted a squared plus b squared on both sides, brought it to the left side. Then I divided both sides by negative two ab and it canceled over here. And then lastly, I wanna isolate just my angle. So I'm gonna go c is equal to the inverse of cos of this entire fraction here, c squared minus a squared minus b squared, all over negative two ab. The nice thing is, is that if you write down this formula right over here, um, then you don't have to do step one, two, and three in the future. So if you wanna use this formula right here for your cheat sheet when you're trying to find an unknown angle, that would be wise to do so, do that. Now we just plug in our values. So we're gonna take the inverse of what's side C? Side C is opposite of the angle, side C is 30. This matters, all right? This matters, capital, exclamation point, all that kind of stuff. What side is C matters. 
Um, a and B, it doesn't matter which ones those are because those can be mixed. C matters. C is opposite to the angle you're trying to find. If you're trying to find this angle right over here, then this is C and you're going to have to solve uh, accordingly. So please, this one can't be messed up. The other two, it doesn't matter if you mix up A and B. C can't be mixed up in this formula where you're saying that C is equal to all this stuff over here. Because look at this, both A and B squared are subtracted and they're both on the bottom here. C is the lone value that's uh, that's a, like by itself right over here. So it very much matters that you're choosing the, the correct value for that. Um, now A squared is gonna be 18 squared, 22 squared, all divided by negative two times 18 multiplied by 22. And now we're going to plug this into our calculator here. So again, I'm gonna just calculate what's in my, in my brackets first, and then we'll worry about everything else. So we're gonna go open the brackets here, It'll be 30 squared minus 18 squared minus 22 squared. I'm gonna close the brackets. So I'm gonna have brackets just on the top, and then I'm gonna have brackets just on the bottom. So then I'm gonna go divide it by, open my brackets again, negative, whoops, negative two, multiplied by 18, multiplied by 22. And then I'm gonna close my brackets. So the calculator will calculate the answer on the top, calculate the answer on the bottom, and then divide the two. So we're gonna get some type of negative value right over here, negative whatever, and still we're taking the inverse of this value. Um, and I'm gonna go dot, dot, dot. Next, second function cos, second function answer, and we're going to get a value over here. C is going to be rounded to the nearest degree, 97 degrees. Which makes sense. If we look over here, this is an obtuse angle, so 97 degrees makes sense. Once we've solved for C, we can now use the sine law. So we're going to use the sine law to solve for the next thing. Why? Because we have a pair. So we're going to go back and, and take the one extra decimal place here for, for our value there. So we had 97, but let's, uh, let's round it a little bit less so we get a more accurate answer when we do this. Sine of our angle divided by the corresponding side is equal to sine of A over that corresponding side, uh, which happens to be 18. Now I can solve for sine A. So remember, sine A is gonna be the cross multiplication then divided by 30. So cross multiply then divide. So we're gonna go 18 sine 96.7 and then get our answer divided by 30. And we get a value of 0.5959. And we're going to take the inverse of that answer, remember. That's what, what A is gonna be equal to. If we wanna isolate this variable, we're gonna to have to take the inverse of that answer right there. So let's take the inverse of that value, sine, second, second function sine, second function answer, and that rounds to 37 degrees. We've solved for our two angles. To find our final angle, B, that's just gonna be 180 degrees minus 97 minus 37. 180 minus 97 minus 37. It's gonna give us 46 degrees and we've now solved them all. So for this last one, I often like to just use the 180, uh, like the total of all the angles equaling 180. It just works out a lot faster than having to do the sine law. We could use the sine law again and then go sine B over 22 using the same fraction over here to get us uh, the exact same answer for B. But uh, once we solve for two angles, I just like to use the sum of 180 inside of a triangle to find the third and final angle. And that is how you solve for an unknown angle. All right, good luck and have fun.